I started boxing, you know, while I was in the Navy because the Navy boxing coach told me that if I won the all Navy super heavyweight championship, he would get me off my ship. And to my response was, give me the gloves. I wasn't looking for Christ, I tell you that. You know, I, I wasn't trying to be a Christian. I wasn't trying to be saved. I wasn't trying to love God. You know, my buddy Vernon Rose started boxing. He calls me, he says, hey man, we're gonna get together this weekend. What you got going on? I said, man, I got nothing going on. You know, I said, my, my calendar's completely open. What, whatever you wanna do, that's what we're doing. He says, okay, man, we can get together this Sunday. And I was like, Sunday? You know, what clubs are doing anything on Sunday, you know? I was like, I was like oh, okay, yeah, yeah, man, good on Sunday. He said, yeah, I'll pick you up about 8 o'clock for church. Which my response was, if you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. <laughs> and so I, I, I wasn't pre-churched, you know, I had no pre-church exposure or anything, you know. And so I get to church, you know, and I got dreadlocks all in my head. You know, I had gold chains on, big gold chains at church. And I'm sitting there just ready to do my thing, get into church and get out, you know, and, you know, do my due diligence. Hey, thank you guys. But I made the mistake. I made the mistake and actually started listening. And the preacher was actually preaching the gospel. He said, if you want to receive Christ your Lord and Savior, come down to the altar. Here I am up here. I'm crying. I'm booing. I'm, I'm broken over my sin. And, and I come down to the altar that day, and um, I repent of my sin, and I give my heart to Christ. That was in December of 1990, and I have not looked back since. Jesus commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. And um, to me, that means sharing God's word pertaining to eternal life, salvation, redemption, and Christ Jesus with as many people as possible. Um, we were out, um, out, I was at Starbucks, and um, I'm in the, um, uh, in the line there, and Starbucks has this, has this um, sign up that you know how you can make someone happy you know with a cup of coffee or something to that effect you know i asked the person behind me in line i said hey you think that sign is true you think you can make somebody's day and he responded nah i was like huh i said let's put it to the test you know let me see if i can make your day by buying you a cup of coffee and him and his girlfriend with him so now i put it to the test i ordered their coffee and i said hey did it work and he's like yeah it did now, but from there, it was a great bridge. You know, I said, hey, you know what? I can also make your eternity. He's like, all right. You kind of look at me kind of weird. And, then I, and I began to ask him about their church history, their church background. I said, hey, but can you think you can please God or appease God by anything that you that you do? That any If you do a sin, you commit a sin, do you think that committing a good work will balance out that sin? You know, and they was like, yeah, of course, you do something bad, you know, kind of the karma type um, answer. And um, I was, and I responded to them with the gospel. Well, I can see the wheels start to turn in their, in their minds and their thoughts and how they're considering, you know, their sins, because I had already gone over their sins with them and what they were. Have they ever lied before? Have they ever stolen before? Have they ever committed adultery even in thought? And I'd already kind of gone over that with them. And then I went on to explain that Jesus who is the only perfect person that ever lived, he died for our sin and offered us his perfection in exchange for our sin. And it's just in moments like that when you get a chance, a 10 to 15 minute window to, to be able to share the gospel and share you know, the truth of God's word um, with them. Um, not just, hey, God loves you, have a good day. You know, that doesn't change their heart. Their hearts have to, they have to be lost before they can be found. They have to be broken before they can be repaired. They have to be sick before they need a physician. And you know, when I hear the Great Commission, it, it, it stirs me um, to, to want to go forth and, and do exactly what it says. Because I know when I'm sharing my faith, it's that one perfect opportunity to know that you're doing exactly what God would have you to be doing at that exact moment.